Hi YouTubers. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video and the end of 2015 is drawing near and I thought I'd make one. I've been very very busy with my fish. Um, my discus tank here. I added a little tiny fish over here. This little tiny blue ram. And he caused me all kinds of problems. I broke my own rule and I didn't quarantine him because I had seen him in the pet store for quite a while. He was in a very healthy tank. Um, it, it, it's a small, privately owned pet store and they take really, really good care of their fish. Uh, they're all individual tanks. So, I mean, it was a very reputable place that I got them from and I, I just took a chance. And it's a gamble and it really is. And even if you quarantine, I want to add that too, because there's kind of a misconception that if you quarantine for a month or maybe even longer, you're guaranteed that, you know, if the fish is healthy, you can plop them in your tank with all your expensive fish and everything should be hunky-dory. That's not always the case. You can have a fish that has a disease uh, that doesn't affect him. He, you know, he could be harboring something and it will affect your other fish. And that's exactly what happened in my discus tank here. I had a little German ram who I'm pretty sure had columnaris. He was a carrier and it spread through every single discus in this tank and it was a tragedy. It was a very, very expensive fix. I had to treat with three separate medications for a very long time. I had to do mega water changes. Um, I had to adjust my temperature. One of the things about columnaris is you don't want to have high temperatures. Uh, a lot of people will, will tell you if your fish has some type of a disease, you want to raise the temperature and add salt. Well, not with columnaris. That's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. You want to lower your temperature. My temp at the time was about 90 degrees. Um, and that just made it spread like wildfire. So I actually had to turn down my temp and use several different medications. Um, I had to medicate their food. Some of them weren't eating, so then I also had to do the water column. It was a big project and it was a big mess. And I hope someone out there will learn from my mistake. Uh, there's no there's no guarantee when you put a fish in your your tank that it's going to be safe. I mean, even if I had quarantined, I would have never suspected there was anything wrong because the little German ram was healthy. He never had any symptoms of the disease. So, again, sometimes disease just happens. No matter how, you know, good you are at fish keeping, no matter how clean your tank is, there's that little guy. He's really cute. You know, I clean this twice a week. The filters are always clean. I'm probably, you know, a little more on top of it than I actually have to be. I mean, I have gravel in here, which is a pain. A lot of people don't like gravel because you have to deal with the detrius and uh, they're harder to clean. But, you know, I vacuum it at minimum once a week, sometimes more. Uh, so aside from the very occasional fluke disease, no pun intended because it wasn't really flukes, <laughs> but it was a fluke that they got it. Um, it can happen. It can happen to anybody. It can happen in the best of tanks with the best of fish, the best of conditions. Uh, and when it does happen, you don't panic, do your research, find out what they need for that particular uh, disease, spend the money, do it right, and in the long run, the payoff is worth every penny. As you can see, my fish now are really healthy, happy, the tank's looking great. I got some little discus that are growing. The bigger ones are doing good. They're still growing a little bit bigger. So all is well again in the discus tank. I have one discus that's still, you can see him back there, he looks kind of dark. He's the last of the, the sickies, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to pull through. He's just kind of taking a little bit longer than the other guys, but they're doing really good. They've brightened up quite a bit, but they were all black. Like this guy here, 
who is a beautiful turquoise fish. He was jet black. You couldn't see any markings on him at all. It was the saddest thing. They had clamped fins. They weren't eating. They were all pointed towards the top. You just, you, it was awful. You didn't want to see that. <clears throat> Let's just pan around and look at my goldfish. Over here we have what I call my little water piggies. These are all my goldfish. And you'll see Buscemi has some white stuff on him because he had an injury recently. Uh, so don't worry about him. He's going to be well cared for. I'm actually going to get my hospital tank going for him and give him some medicine and get him back on track. But he had a little bit of an accident, which can happen. You know, sometimes they get stuck behind things or other, you know, they'll battle and they'll have little battle wounds. But with goldfish, it's very, very rare. It's more uh, likely that you'll have a fish that gets injured from just getting stuck behind an air tube or a filter or something like that. But these guys are doing really good. There's the little guy that used to be orange. He's now snowy white with a yellow head and a little bit of yellow in his fins. Really cute. Cute little guy. And there's Finnegan. My Ryukin who does flips all the time. He's got an air bladder problem which is pretty common for them. And then we've got Angel. My Calico Telescope. And then we've got this guy. We call him Chucky. He's another Calico Telescope. Doing real good. Happy, happy fish. This guy used to be called Little Blackie. Oh, he's behind the calico. And he was jet black at one time. And now he's changing color. Really a cute fish. Cute little guy. So that's about it, fish people. Uh, I hope 2016 brings everybody lots of uh, good things and happy fish. Um... Hopefully I'll have some new fish in my future, and I will make a video uh, as soon as I can, and uh, Happy New Year. Bye-bye.